Father, and the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen. The Lord and the Fathers, the seminarians of your faithful. Today, of course, the taking of the, the Feast of Candle Mass, one of our principal feast days in the Society of St. Pius X. And as we take the cassock, and then uh, those take the cassock for the very first time. And so today, just uh, two considerations. We say that in the in the ceremony of the receiving of the cassock, the young man is going to be tontured. So three of the young men will be tontured. And as of the five that, are, that will be taking the ceremony today, three will be tontured. And we have this, this, uh, this sacred ceremony of the entering into the clerical state. And it simply says, concerning the works of God, studiat, studiat. May he study the works of God. We're now in a time where there's a lot of studying going on, a lot of interesting studies. Many people are studying on all the wickedness being done by the Bilderbergers, by the communists that are running our country. As that is of today, today is the second day of February, and we are now 14 days into a communist country. 14 days ago on the 20th of January, we had our first communist tyrant selected as the head of the United States. He was not elected. Trump was re-elected. And our country is now officially a communist country, run by a tyrant who already made more than 45 executive orders in the last few days. So he doesn't need to follow the due process of law in order to make our country become more and more communist. It's been being prepared for a long time, in fact, hundreds of years. And what is being prepared is a preparation for the coming of the kingdom of the Antichrist. For the last 700 years, there has been a move to prepare the world for the coming of the great leader. The great leader who will not be Christ, but will be anti-Christ. And in this preparation, 700 years of preparation especially since the beginning of the dropping of the great teachings of St. Thomas Aquinas, then the rebellion of the, of, of the Protestants and the, and, and the, the revolution and deformation of our culture and the, and the Renaissance, and then, of course, all the wars of the last several hundred years preparing for the communist war of World War II, by which communism spread itself throughout the whole world, and the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament and the New Testament and Our Lady of Fatima a hundred years ago, who said that Russia would spread her errors of communism throughout the world. And there are many people that see the world as going bad. And each one sees it at a different time and how bad it's going. And they study. They study and they study. How did we get where we are today? Well, there are communist infiltrators. There are masons inside the church. There are masons inside of our governments. There's wicked men ruling, and they have been preparing for hundreds of years. The bankers taking over the rule of the, of, of the Jews and are preparing for the way of the Antichrist. Many hundreds of years of preparation, and many people are interested to see how did we get where we are. All these wicked leaders of hundreds of years, not just the last few years, and preparations throughout the whole world, not just in our country. Because what is going on? Turns out that St. Augustine is still the most wise. And St. Augustine gives the explanation of these two kingdoms. There are many bad guys all over the world. But there are many kingdoms, we say, in the world, more than 200 countries on earth. But in fact, there are only two kingdoms. There is the kingdom of God, and there is the kingdom of Satan. There is not a third kingdom. And it has taken a long time to get where we are today, where now we have a global lockdown. Global rules, a testing, a test run of the one world government. So the one world government can be properly and completely put in place, so that you, well, how will you escape? In March of last year, 2020, the father of one of our parishioners in the resistance, Catholic but not part of our 
from part of the resistance of the movement. He was going to escape. He had made plans for many years, knowing that our country will one day collapse, knowing that it would not be safe to be in the cities, knowing that one should prepare for a dark day. So in a South American country, in a Central American country, he set up a base. He had all kinds of cash there. He had food there. He was well prepared. And when it seemed as though trouble was on the horizon, he went on his way there. And he traveled to Ecuador, and he never made it to his destination. He was cut off from his destination. His money is still sitting there in his house in an unknown place in Central America. His place is still prepared. The food is still hidden. The money is still there. The cash is still in the barrels. But what happened? The man was trapped because they wouldn't allow flying out of Quito, Ecuador in March of this year. He did not have the sufficient heart medication and neural medications that he needed. He was not allowed to get his regular medication, medications and he died. One of the first victims of the pandemic. Many, many hundreds of thousands and millions have already died throughout the entire world because of the evil preparation of the enemies of God. They have done a great evil preparation to shut down our world. They have studied very well. And they have prepared very well to take over the world. And others have studied against them. I am going to be ready when the hard times come. Our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about such a man. There was a man who was preparing for the winter. It's cold in the winter and there's no food in the winter. So he stored up all kinds of food in his barn. And he was well prepared for many winters. But in the middle of the night, he died. His food went to someone else. How do we study? How do we prepare for the onslaught of our enemies? Remember that there is really only one true enemy, and he is called the enemy. Singular. Satanas means the enemy. There are no other enemies. Satan is the enemy. And also it says in the sacred scripture, when the apostles went into the, to the vineyard and they saw weeds and cockle growing up amongst the wheat, they came to the master and, our, and they said to the master, how did the cockle get into the wheat? We planted only wheat. And he responded, the enemy has done this. The enemy is Satan. And one of the great lies of Satan is that he tries to get us to believe that there are other enemies. That there are other persons to worry about, other things to worry about. And if we really want to be prepared, store up non-perishable foods. And if you really want to be prepared, make sure you're well armed. And if you really want to be prepared, make sure that you know our democracy, and know it well, and defend your rights. But how do you prepare? Studiat operibus dei. May you be an eager studier of the works of God. In the works of God, in the Abitub case, in the works of God. May you be an eager studier in the works of God. Let those works be inside of your blood. And we have to be an eager studier of these things. There are plenty of men that eagerly study the works of the devil. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the children of darkness are so much wiser than the children of light. Because the children of darkness know what they want. They want money. They want power. They want to get ahead by being friends with the right people in charge. They know exactly what they want, and they work hard to achieve it. And they take the necessary steps, and they study the necessary ways in order to get what they want. Therefore, they are wise. 
For wisdom means to guide the means to an end. The children of darkness are very wise. The problem is that the children of light are not wise at all. They know what their end is. We are made for heaven. We are made to see God face to face. We are made to carry treasures into heaven, which are the virtues that we are to adorn our souls with throughout life. We are to build up merits that will earn for us the kingdom of heaven. We are to drive out the wickedness and contagion of lies, of heresy, and sin in our hearts. And then do our best to remove these things from the world around us. How does it all begin? Studiox. We must study the works of God. If we study too much the works of the devil, we'll fall into his trap. If we study too much the ways of the devil, so that we can combat the devil, the devil's techniques, we will be defeated. We don't combat the devil, the devil's techniques. So as young men come today, they receive a small haircut in the form of a cross. They come to receive a black cassock. And this cassock signifies what? The black signifies darkness and death. The darkness and death that was originally in Adam when he was created. For he was dead to sin, and he knew not the works of the devil. He knew not the works of sin. It was all as darkness to him. He did not have the spirit of the world in him. He did not have the spirit of a fallen flesh. He had not the spirit of the devil. It was all darkness to him. He was dead to these things. But then he decided to open his eyes to the ways of Satan and to commit the sin of pride and to turn away from God. And as a result, he put original sin into his own children and his children's children until the ending of time. Only the Blessed Virgin Mary would be immaculately conceived without the drop, smallest stain of his terrible sin. But all the rest of us are born with that stain and in darkness. And hence, when we come to God, the young man who's going to become a priest, the young man that's going to become a brother, he is going to be a leader in virtue, to teach others how to follow God, and he is going to be a leader in teaching to tell others how to follow God. And so what's the first thing he must do? He must be dead to sin. He must be dead to the world, dead to lies. And hence we give him a black cast. But this man is not of the world. He is in the world. He will spend the remainder of his days in this world. In heaven, there are no black cassocks. Only white robes. Black cassocks are meant for this life. They are meant for this world, for those who will go about and teach and preach by their robes. I remember I was a young priest, getting in line in the airport in the days before social distancing, with 400,000 of my closest friends, all lined up, packed together, and I would hear all the people talking. That guy's a no good for nothing. This guy's rotten. And that guy's this. And this guy's that. And she makes me sick. Then they would turn and see me in the black cassock. And that's why I said he has to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What? What? The other guy. Yep, that's right. That's why you got to be more spiritual. That's what I've been saying the whole time. Got to praise Jesus. Got to go to say a rosary. All of a sudden, everybody's conversation changed. Because they saw a black cassock. And it happened both ways. One time I was standing in front of a plane, getting ready to get on a plane. And one of the times when the airports are closed because of weather, then all of a sudden, every plane takes off at the same time. And packed. My plane was boarding. Another plane was boarding at about four, four, four planes down. And I saw this young businessman, maybe 30 years old. At that time, he was older than me. And he looked at me, and I looked at him. And there were a thousand people between us. And his eyes penetrated with full hatred. He was about ready to get on his plane. He was about to miss his plane. 
But he ran away from his plane, came over to me and said, Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you one of them? I said, What? Are you society of St. Pius X? Are you a priest of tradition? He said, Yes, I am. I hate you. I was personal friends with John Courtney Murray, one of the great evil wicked men of Vatican II and of our times. I was personal friends with him, and I hate you. Then he ran back to go get on his plane, and he almost missed it. The cassock speaks. It speaks. St. Francis of Assisi, he said, It's time for us to go and preach today to his monks. And they went out, and they walked through the city of Assisi, and they walked back. And they said, What do we preach? He said, We preach by our habits. We preach by our walking. We preach by our poverty. We preach by our way. No need to say words. Studiat. It's necessary to study. And studying is not only done by reading books. We find that in the real world, no man can be a real doctor. No man can be a real lawyer. No man can be a real priest. Unless he has put his priesthood, his doctorhood, and his, 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 his lawyerhood into practice. If you were as part of your study and you got to go and do practicals. You don't just know that the heart and the liver and the brain are three different things. You better know how to operate in the real battlefield of the, of the surgical places. You need to learn how to function as a doctor. And then after a while you are called a doctor. Teaching cannot only be done by books. Teaching cannot be only done by words. Studiat cannot be done by only reading and hearing. It must be done by doing. Study. May he study the works of God. May they enter into his heart and blood so that it will come out when he walks. It will come out when he talks. It'll come out in the matter of his carrying himself. As we mentioned so many times about Elias the prophet. That one day a man came to a woman in Sarepta and said, Have you seen the prophet? Do you know a prophet? And she said, Yes, I know a prophet. He walks by my house every day. He has never spoken a single word to me. I have not ever seen him perform a miracle or say a word. But he walks by my house every day, and I know that he is a man of God. He is a prophet. Go to him. We must be studiers of the works of God. We're entering into a very great battle that is the same battle that has always been going on. The battle between Satan and God. This battle is a battle over human minds. It is a battle over the human heart. It is a battle over our choices. And how does the devil get us to follow him into hell? The devil gets us to follow him into hell by studying how to become a millionaire. By studying how to survive in this world materially. By desiring the things of this world. And as we also say in another prayer in this taking of the Kazakh. May you not have the desires of the world. Leave behind the desires of the world. You have to have a new desire, which is the desire for Christ, the desire to imitate Him, the desire to follow Him wherever He goes. And this you have to put your eyes on Christ, because He so easily disappears. Remember, our Master, He was standing in a crowd, and His enemies were going to stone Him to death. They had him surrounded. His enemies were going to take him off a cliff and throw him off the cliff in his own hometown of Nazareth. He disappeared from their midst and they could not find him. And he just walked away. Our Lord Jesus Christ is very slippery. He can so easily get away. Therefore, what must we do? We have to keep our eyes on him all the time. And when he turns right, we turn right. When he turns left, we turn left. When he stops, we stop. Where he sleeps, we sleep. Where he works, we work. Where he plays, we play. Where he sings, we sing. 
and the young man must begin that journey. There will be books. In a seminary, there are always books. There will be classes of philosophy and classes of theology and classes of history and Latin. All kinds of classes. Well, these classes are not so that you pass a test. These classes are not so that you can be wise and become a great professor. These classes are to enter into the heart, enter into the blood, enter into our being, that we might carry them to the ends of the earth. Hence we have the word philosophy. What does philosophy mean? It means the love. Philo means love. The love of wisdom. He who does not love wisdom, he shall never become wise. There must be a personal love of wisdom, a personal love of God's ways, and to follow him wherever he leads. Hence, we don't just study St. Thomas Aquinas, we love St. Thomas Aquinas. We don't just read the works of St. Augustine, we love St. Augustine, and we love his heart, and we love what he has to say, and we love his spirit, and we recognize that he spoke of most profound truth when he said, two loves built two cities, and there are no other cities, and there are no other loves we are builders of the city of Christ, but many priests are builders of the kingdom of Satan. Many bishops are builders of the kingdom of Satan. Our present Holy Father, Pope Francis, he is a main architect in the kingdom of constructing the kingdom of Satan. And there are popes who can construct the kingdom of Satan, and bishops, and priests, and faithful. And many people look so holy in their black cassocks and in their nice vestments. But they do not have the love of God in their hearts. And hence they are builders of the kingdom of Satan. They don't study with their hearts the works of God. They don't try to put these works into their own lives. This is what we must do in order to be prepared for the battle that is ahead of us. Fighting the Bilderbergers and fighting the New World Order and fighting the communism in our country and throughout the world. It cannot be fought without the knowledge and love of the true faith. Without the knowledge and love of God, there is no other way. And hence we give young men a cassock to begin that journey. So that what they learn in books must be manifested in their clothing. And what they learn in books must be manifested in their movements and in their actions and their heart. And it will slowly, slowly transform them. They will still be sinners and they need to go to confession. They must still recognize that they are weak and foolish and not worthy to be in the army of God. But we must be in his army and we must still strive for perfection. Though we must regularly go to the Holy Sacrament of Confession to wipe away our sins. And we must recognize that the studiers of the works of God, these are the ones who will make it through the great chastisement to come. These are the ones who win the battle. We do not prepare special storable foods. We need to prepare the special love of God, the special depth of faith in our governing all of our lives, the special will to follow Christ wherever He leads. This is what is needed for our times. But in any case, we'll close here. But this is a good day, great day for the seminarians to be able to receive their cassock and then also hopefully be able to wear it for the rest of their lives. It says also another prayer. You received your cassock today, your habit today. May you wear it perpetually. May you be able to wear it perpetually all the way until your dying day. Because many, many will not do this. Some, of course, it will be because their religious life is not for them. And that's fine. And they go back out to the world. But the others must wear it perpetually. That is not only when they're physically wearing it in the daytime, but even when they're sleeping at night. And even in the time of persecution. Remember, our ancestors had to travel without their cassocks sometimes because of the persecution. They had to sneak from house to house and dress in, in, in lay clothes, and yet they always wore the cassock in their hearts. They had never put it off, and they carried it with them, and the presence of Christ was still with them, though they were in the place and time of persecution. We hope we will wear our cassock every day until the day that we die. But if the persecution comes... When we have to go into hiding and go from house to house, we will wear it in our hearts. But we must never let go of it and always have it inside of us and be worn perpetually. Dominus pars veritatis mei. 
The Lord is a portion of my, of, of, of my inheritance and of my cup. He shall be the one that gives me my inheritance. We'll say these words when we cut the little, hair, the little haircut. Our inheritance is coming from God. Our home is heaven. We remember that. And this is the beginning of the journey. There will be many steps along the way. But as St. Thomas Aquinas says, the end is the first thing in the intention. The last thing in execution. We begin our journey. The young man put on his cassock. He wants to wear the everlasting inheritance that he will have in heaven. He will get his inheritance in heaven. He wants to aim towards that inheritance. He wants to make the Lord the portion of his cup. The Lord, the, his only part in the portion of his cup. The Lord shall be his portion and the Lord shall be his cup. And then the Lord be our portion and the Lord be our cup all the way to the end of our days. If we find ourselves in the desert and there is no food, God can make manna fall. He can make quail come. If we find ourselves at the top of the mountain, like St. Mother Cabrini, and there is no water, she took a staff and she stuck a rock in Colorado, and water came out, and she has water from God, and the water is still there to this day. Water can come out of a rock like it did in the time of Moses. Water can come out of a rock as it did in Colorado just a few years ago, 100, 100 years, 105 years ago. And they can happen time and time again. Don't worry about water. Don't worry about starable foods. Don't worry about the external preparations. But rather prepare the heart for the battle to come. And prepare the soul in the love of faith, the love of hope, the deep hope, and perpetual charity. The deepest of all charity. Close God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then after the Mass today, all are invited down to the seminary for a little... Uh, uh, we pass in celebration afterwards.